felt amazing. Did you ever just feel better just because you took a shower and got all hydrated? <laughs> well, so do our animals, let me tell you. Let me tell you what I think about water. Um, let me get dressed first. Ah. Let me tell you, water plays a huge part in my hobby. Let me explain some of the areas I want to touch on today. So today I want to talk about hydration and how important water is with my animal husbandry, not only for hydration, but also for humidity levels. So let me get started with my daily ritual of misting my enclosure. One of my daily routines to keep the humidity level up in this room and specifically in these cages is, you guessed it, water. So I miss these cages. I miss some of these enclosures twice a day, three times a day, and sometimes just once a day, depending on the humidity level needed for each of my animals. So for instance, up here, besides my platy swimming in my palindarium, are tree frogs. So they're gonna get misted first thing in the morning, right before work, when I get home from work, and then before I go to bed. Could I have an automated mister? I could, but I kind of like going around to each tank, looking inside right now. I mean, if I was gonna have an automated mister, it probably wouldn't be on my paludarium because as the water evaporates, I have saran wrap up top. It's creating its own humidity. And if we come over here to the African fat tails, you can see I have the hygrometer in here. And this shows me the temperature. Can you see that? Yeah, this shows me the temperature and the humidity level. And it's spot on, it's perfect. Right here it's at 64. I like it somewhere between 55 and 70. But I do miss these plants down to make sure that they stay. And over here there's a moist tide. I make sure I get some water inside. So that's the African fat tails. And that's in there. But down here I have two crested geckos. They don't need a lot of humidity, but my plants need to be misted a little bit in the morning and a little bit at night. I just want to make sure my moss doesn't dry out. You know, my plants are getting hydrated. They got fresh water. They're not, they're not nocturnal, they're crepuscular. It's like nocturnal. It seems like they're nocturnal. They're most active at dusk and dawn. Over here is a terrarium that I have set up because in here there's two, two baby crested geckos. If at any time they don't seem to be getting along, this is gonna be the other one's enclosure. I wanna make sure I have it ready just in case, like these other ones, and I spray it two or three times a day. So let's go over to my bearded dragon who doesn't like a lot of humidity, but I still have to keep her hydrated. Now, if you can see, this is Clementine, and if you remember, Clementine was born without scales. I'm not an advocate of on purposely breeding reptiles for this because she's very high maintenance. Hi, pumpkin. She's in a perpetual state of shed, so I need to hydrate her, but she doesn't particularly like to be sprayed. So not only am I gonna, I have a little bit of moss growing on the bottom of her tank, I just keep a little bit wet. And make sure her humidity level does not get too high, but she has soft substrate to walk on. And then I'll start by her tail. See how she's kind of receptive? And I just give her a little misting. There you go, buddy. Oh, she likes. See that? I try not to overstay my welcome with the misting since she does get baths every day. Really good soaking. Hi, Tom. And the UVB light is a 5.0. So she's got very specific humidity requirements, which is very low, but I need to keep her hydrated. So that's why I have this particular substrate that will absorb some of the humidity. I keep the floor nice and soft. So these enclosures should have a very high humidity rate, around 90% or so, because I've got frogs in here. I've got some clown frogs in here. So not only do I make sure all the plants are well watered, the substrate, that they have fresh water, fresh water to swim in, 
This enclosure, I'm actually growing live moss. I want to keep some live moss cultures growing. So this gets misted two or three times a day, but there's... Well, there is crustaceans in here. There's isopods in here. I gotta make sure that they're fed on water. This is probably my favorite enclosure. And there's no animals in here yet. All the roots are settling in. I got moss growing on a bark. You got a little ficus, creeping jenny, live moss. I have a lot of beautiful plants in here. Even a huge pothos to keep. So over here, I got sapphire, my blue tongue skink. She doesn't need a lot of humidity, but if you have a skink from maybe Indonesia, like a Meraki or, or one of the other um, skinks, you have to look up where your skink is from and what humidity level they like. Mine is a northern blue tongue skink from northern Australia. It doesn't need a lot of humidity, so basically... Oh, hi, Plumpy! I missed on this side only, so if she wants a humid hide, she has it, and for all the isopods. So in here, this is my poison dart frogs and my morning geckos. My morning geckos are the self-cloning geckos. They're not mature yet, but I have to make sure that this stays moist, the walls stay nice and moist, because I'm growing moss in here. I can't let the moss dry out. They have a little basin in here that I call their little pond. I just keep nice everything nice and moist two or three times a day. This was another one I sometimes miss four times a day. This one and along with this one. This is my big eye tree frog. Oh my gosh, these two guys are so loud with their beautiful clicking. And they're nocturnal, so I don't see them during the day. But at night I come in here with the camera and they're on the rock, they play on their island, I change out their water. Nice and hydrated. Even animals that are not high humidity need hydration. So these two-year-old baby sulcatas still need hydration. Plus I need their sphagnum to stay kind of moist. There's a moist hide over here. They always have a fresh water dish. I feed them on the slate. This hydration, just keeping their humidity level just slight. They don't need a lot of humidity but because they're babies. They still need to be soaked down. They need a little bit of moisture. So not all my guys have standing water. These little fire skinks, I don't think they'll make themselves known, but they have a little um, waterfall in here to keep the water moving, flowing, playing with it. So these are my, this is my fire skinks. Fire skinks enclosure. I do miss this down two or three times a day. And they have running water. And two of my other babies have dripping water. I don't know if you can see that. The water drip. Oh, hello there. Would you like to say hello? He says, um, I drip. I want to say hello. It's okay. I'll get the camera out of your face. It's all right, buddy. And over here, my female, oh, she's upside down. So they're not going to drink standing water out of bowl. So I have a little drip line coming in from those drippers down in here. I got to say, though, this guy is so cool. It's all right, bud. Hey. And his drip line. See how that water falls and it's going to hit leaves and then it falls off the leaves and he will lick it off the leaves. This is one of my newer enclosures that I just made. And I have to actually mist it at night and I'll show you why. So he likes to sleep right there at the hinge of the door. We come over here. It's got some gorgeous plants in it, and everything needs to be misted a couple times a day. But she has chosen to sleep right on the door opening. So instead of bothering her 
I usually miss this throughout the evening when they're active and moving. And this palindarium, and this palindarium I like. It's only got about three inches of water in it, and it goes back a little bit. It creates a lot of its own humidity. But I still have to spray it down. Let me pump it up. I still spray it down. Get my ficus tree. But the star of the show, oh yeah, I'm not going to spray him down because he won't appreciate it very much. If he wants to get wet, he'll go swimming. I'm going to make sure I get the plants in the back. And the beauty about him is when he wants to get wet, that is his pond, his pool that he gets to go swimming in. See you later, buddy. So as you can see, the hydration level or the humidity level and hydration for my reptiles, if I feel that good getting out of a shower, I can only imagine how great it feels for them to have the right humidity level or those that get soaked down in baths. That's why I wanted to talk a little bit about water because it's so critical in my animal's care. So we, we saw about the humidity level, hydration, giving everybody fresh water to drink. When you have aquariums and terrariums and vivariums, pelandariums, water plays such a critical role. It's not something that I would skip on a daily basis. So I might not have to feed them every day. I still have to make sure that everybody's getting the right water requirements. So guys, thanks for checking out my video on how important water is in my hobby. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time.